Hello, welcome to ADHDKidsCanThrive.com. And today I'm interviewing Tarina, who is the owner and host of Motherhood on Purpose. And I invited her to talk to me today because she has a whole bunch of uh, tips that she puts on Instagram about how to keep your home and your family organized. And she has real life experience in doing this with some amazing tips. So I wanted to talk to her today to pick her brain about um, her own personal story, as well as what she shares to help other parents who are trying to get their ADHD kids through uh, home and school life, what she recommends. And I know you're going to have amazing tips. So I'm super excited about this. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you're welcome. Okay. So let's start with um, kind of your own personal story of how you have found yourself in um, and what you're doing today online. Why okay. are you doing this? Well, it kind of all started out on TikTok as fun. Like I was doing a lot of mom related humor, just kind of like daily life stuff that mom's related to. And then I realized I didn't want it to just be another place where moms could complain on the internet. I was like, oh, actually I have a solution for that. Oh wait, I have a solution for that. And I realized things that just come sort of naturally to me aren't always obvious to everyone else. And I was like, oh, maybe I have a talent and something I can share and add value for moms out there. Right. Great. Okay. And that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so you're a mom. Um, how many kids do you have? I have an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, and a two-year-old. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're busy with three kids and you're really good at keeping them organized. <laughs> well, well, I try to do my best. And part of it is really about the mindset of they are still children and nothing will ever be perfect or as well as I would like it. Well, of course. Right. And um, trying to set up systems, I think, to help them, which actually helps you as well um, are good tips. So I learned about you from another Instagram TikTok woman who, um, mentioned you in our conversation as well as she talked about this word, using this word, like a launch pad mm -hmm. and putting launch pads in your house. And I was like, I've never heard that word before. And I thought the whole theory of that was amazing. So can you tell us like, what is a launch pad and how to use them with your kids at home? Absolutely. So kind of like it sounds a launch pad, it's everything you need in one spot to launch you into the activity. So a lot of times I've noticed with ADHDers, I personally don't have it myself, but my husband does and several of my children do, and they have a hard time initiating a task. And if my husband has to find his wallet, find his keys, find his shoes before leaving the house, it's like madness. He's all over the place. But if he has a launch pad where all of those things are right by the door, then he won't forget them. And okay. So the same system in place, like for my kids going to school, their launch pad is the backpack is hung right by the front door, but not just that their shoes are right by the front door and their socks are right by the front door. So normally you'd think, well, socks go in the bedroom. They go with all the clothes, but I found that that was too much, too many steps for my kids. And they needed to just be able to get launched right out the door, put on your socks, put on your shoes, put on your backpack, get out the door. Okay, great. And you live in San Diego, so they're not wearing a coat. <laughs> there are jackets on occasion, but you're right. It's not usually part of the launch pad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you could put the coat in the, in the launch pad as well. Okay. Yeah. That's brilliant. Okay. And then with your kids, have you come up with any systems to help uh, with launch pads around like a homework center, whether that be a desk in the home or the kitchen table um, dining room table, whatever it is to create like a more efficient launch pad for starting homework. Yeah. I've also found that it's different for different children. So they have different preferences. Like one of my kids likes to do homework at the counter. Another likes to do it at the table. They don't like to be together, which is great. <laughs> one of my kids likes it to be quiet. Another one likes to do it with music. So she has headphones. She's also in kindergarten. So she has crayons and a pencil. There's just like some things that need to be there. So she's not spending all of her homework time saying, well, now I need a red crayon. Well, now I'm, you know, getting distracted. She's got everything she needs right there. Right. Okay. And you put that at the kitchen table or yeah. what does she say? Yeah. Okay. Well, hers is, my son is at the table and my daughter is at the um, island. Oh, yeah, with the island. Okay. Where they need it. So it's not spending all of your time chasing down things because 
they will get distracted. Yes. And do you keep this like in a basket or on a tray? Like how do you organize this stuff? In my kitchen, I just have a drawer where it's easy to just grab the pencil and grab the crayons. Luckily, there's not a ton of items they need. But, you know, if it is craft time, they do have a basket with like all the markers and crayons and coloring books. Like I try to keep things as contained as possible so that they can be sufficient to go grab what they need. And they're not right. saying, where's the scissors? Where's the glue? It's like, oh, just grab your basket. Right. Great. Okay. So how does this translate into um, another thing I hear a lot of parents say is the laundry, right? Teaching your child the boring task of doing the laundry. So <laughs> how, what would you recommend the expectation is on what they can and cannot do with the laundry? And really what does completing the laundry look like when your child has ADHD? Um, I like that you said boring because one of my best tips is to make things not boring. So if I've noticed that my kids have like laundry all over the floor in their bedroom and it didn't quite make it in the basket, I'm like, Hey, I'll hold the basket. You throw it in here and see how many you can make. And we just make it a little bit fun instead of going in like, you didn't keep your room clean. You're a failure, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, let me help. Let's just do this. It's much quicker to get it done. And when we put away laundry, I've taken out everything unnecessary. We don't fold clothes in my house. <laughs> my kids have a drawer for shirts. They have a drawer for pants and a drawer for pajamas and other things. And, that's and so it. it's very easy for them to just, I sometimes I'll do the sorting and I'll just say, here's your pile, put it in the top drawer. Here's your pile, put it in the middle drawer. And I just try and cut out, I mean, because my kids are little, eventually they'll add more steps to their routine, but I'm just trying to make it a thing that they feel like they're empowered to do and that we can get it done quick. Right. And it may not ever evolve. Yeah, if they <laughs> never want to fold their clothes ever, I don't even care. <laughs> I love you see these ADHD memes and I have a teenager who it's just still just we're doing good if it gets just placed on the shelf or in the drawer doesn't have to be folded so we're still working on that I think it's really all about a mindset because especially me as a person who doesn't have ADHD it took me a long time to realize that my husband wasn't just lazy and you know we had a lot of contention in our marriage in the beginning until I realized oh your brain just works differently than mine. Yeah. And so we work with hacks, but hacks don't always work and systems don't always work. And so when all of that fails, the only thing you can do is decide how you're going to think about it and how you're going to react. And you can have a life filled with struggle and stress and frustration, or you can use that energy to find solutions. Right. That's very wise. That's very wise. Okay. So how do you, what are the hacks you use? Um, I'm curious the hacks that you share and use, um, for the bathroom. How do you manage, um, things that they, do you keep it? I'm guessing you're keeping it super simple and do you keep stuff on the, on the counter? So it's very visual. The toothbrush and the toothpaste go together in a cup on the counter. That needs to be very visible because we use that twice a day. Right. Right. Um, luckily my son's easy. He doesn't have a lot of things, <laughs> but right. you know, my daughters have brushes and hair ties and bows and that just stays in a drawer. Sometimes my daughter likes to hyper-focus on organization and she will make those bows and those things in that drawer look so organized in their little containers. And I'm proud of her. And I, I congratulate her. And then sometimes it's all just shoved in there and yeah. I'm okay with both. You know, at the end of the day, they know where the things belong and there's not too many things that it becomes a mess. Like as long as it still has space to put things away, I think that's key. Just yep. trying to like minimize the potential for disaster. <laughs> right. And kind of looking the other way too, when things aren't perfect, yeah. right? Sometimes it just, there are other things that are more important. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Uh, hack advice for uh, the kitchen for, I think like um, snacks and kids where they're at with independently, as far as what they could cook for themselves. Like, do you have hacks to make that more easy Yeah. for like an ADHD kid or family, um, in the midst of like, you know, they're participating with the whole family. Right. So yeah. how do you make it easy, 
um, and help keep your kitchen like somewhat organized? Um, I have had to rethink some things. So the butter usually goes at the top of the fridge, but my kids are at this at the stage where they want to make their own toast. So now we put the butter in a drawer that they can reach. That's not yeah. where butter goes typically, but for their age, now they can reach their plates, they can reach their silverware, they can reach the butter and the bread and the toast. They've got that down. They also have um, the bottom shelf in the pantry is all kids snacks. So they can get to everything in there. They know that's free reign. There's a drawer in our fridge that's all the produce, like um, the oranges and the string cheese and the yogurts. That's all in a drawer. So it helps with their decision making. Like all they have to do is open a drawer and they can pick anything they can see. And okay. they don't have to rifle through the whole fridge of where I kept the leftovers and the meat for tomorrow's dinner. Like they don't have to see that or worry about that. Right. Like, they just go to the one drawer. Yeah. And they even have a drawer, like we keep our plates and cups and everything up in the cupboard, but we have one drawer down there with kids water bottles and kids cups and plates and bowls. So when they want a snack, they can just open a drawer. I like to minimize the amount of climbing and stools my kids have to use. Oh, yeah. So keeping everything at levels they can reach and keeping their decision making to a minimum is helpful for all of us. Okay. That sounds great. Okay. Um, let me ask you, okay, so we kind of talked about, tell me what, what do you think, what are some wise words that you have just about, um, like, do you promote like specific products that are helpful with like organizing? Um, I guess it depends on the space there. I think my biggest thing is just to be flexible and learn with your kids. Like for me, I love the pretty clear containers. And so in my pantry, I started putting things in clear containers and even my kids snacks. And then several of them got broken and I realized this is not sustainable. <laughs> so I got the more durable like cereal containers that I put the goldfish in and they can just pour it out. If they drop the thing of goldfish, it's not going to break. So just being flexible with like what I might want versus what season we're in right now. Like I might want cute baskets that are, um, you know, for all their toys to be hidden, but then yeah. they're not going to see them. So they might need clear Tupperware containers that are a little bit more durable, a little bit more see-through, not necessarily what I want, but what works for our family right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And then ADHD kids are very visible. Yeah. I, I think I read the stat, like 95% of ADHD kids are use their visual senses. Right. Um, the most to help them navigate through life, whether that's brushing their teeth or making a sandwich or doing their homework and going to school. Yeah. Um, so that, so I was think, laughing because of the clear containers and um, putting things on the counter, those kind of things I think are really helpful. Yeah. We also have a visual, um, not short chart, like it's a task chart where I just put this magnetic bar. It's like what you would use to put knives on from Ikea. And I just made little magnets that I put on there. And one has a picture of a toothbrush. One has a picture of pajamas. One has a picture of a book. So they know they can just look at their routine for bed and be like, oh, toothbrush, check, I did that. Pajamas, check, I did that. And so I don't have to remind them every single step that's in my head. They can just see and know like, what have I done? What do I need to do next? Okay. So, and is this in their rooms, their bedrooms? This one's in the kitchen because that's where most of our life is happening. Yeah. And so I can just say, it's bedtime, go look at your chart. And then they're actually little magnets that we flip over and they have a check mark on the back. So they also get that sense of accomplishment where they're like, look, mom, I've got all my check marks. Okay, okay. So we're ready for bed. That's great. So they're little magnets that they just flip. Yeah on the knife. Um, oh, that's so brilliant. Like a little magnet. knife. Yeah. Magnet. Okay, great. Any other hacks or tips? Oh man. I'm just full. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is just, um, being flexible to change things like that magnet bar might work for one week for a family. And then it might not, then they might need to like have something with stickers and rewards. You know, it's, it's just not going to be the same thing for the same family or even the same child in every family. And so realizing that like, just because a system might fail doesn't mean you're a failure. Right. 
And even like, especially as a person who doesn't have ADHD, I don't know all the things and I don't feel the need to research so deep into ADHD that I know exactly what everything is. I just need to know, I need to have grace. I just need to rethink everything, be flexible and have grace and have fun. Exactly. Exactly. With a few tips can make things go a lot easier. Um, So I appreciate all of your hacks and all of your ways of thinking about things because it's really helpful. Um, I think when you're in the middle of trying to raise a family and everybody's moving in different directions and trying to like streamline and create structure and rhythms at home is so important and not easy to do when everybody's so busy and um, just trying to make day-to-day life work. Yeah, we all do. Um, but some of these hacks are really helpful and can make a huge difference. And you don't need a ton of them, right? right? You don't need a lot of hacks. You just need a couple that can make a big difference based on the stage of where your kids are at in life. So that's um, great. And I appreciate you saying that all about the laundry. Because there's a <laughs> lot of mamas who are really stressed about the laundry and getting it done and um, doing all the executive steps that are necessary to do the laundry. And sometimes it's just better to look the other way yeah. and just do the minimum. Exactly. Right? Yeah, that's great. Okay. Well, thank you for your time today.